Welcome back to the Balance Light Hotel. It's a good morning, Niger Show. Now, of course, uh, we'll be not introduced. Say we will get, we will get a very, very casual guest in the house. And of course, you know, say now politics season, now we don't enter. Now, the guest will get on our seat. Now, somebody we, uh, he was born in the country here, now part of us, uh, from the eastern part of the country, eventually in Gobodo, able to continue in good works. And I don't look back, talk, say, uh, as presidential elections, so as the general elections they come in 2019, in get with him, go like add. Uh, to the country as to make development uh, very, very fast and to make Nigeria develop quickly. Uh, I need to say, not be just to come add something, not to climb on top and become the president of the country, not be your own aspirations. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we would like to help us welcome on our couch today uh, Chike Ukeigu, somebody from our bar, we call New York, we decide to say, he won't make Nigeria better. You're Thank welcome you. to our couch. Thank you very much. You're welcome to the show. It's great to you. have you on the show. Thank you. Now, we know that they're not too young to run bail. They'll actually bring into the political limelight a lot of young people vying for positions. Now, we don't interview lots of um, presidential aspirants. It's young people um, vying for that position. For someone like you, <clears throat> where you not even be friends with the political Space for inside Wobodo, Nigeria. Why you decide? We always like start with this, but why you decide to go for the presidency seat? Uh, so they, uh, they tell people, and this is this is great. I, I, I love people with the talk. Say I know if you speak pidgin English, right? Mm -hmm. So when when I talk to them, I can't the show. Um, for me, it's like all right. Remember, I go showcase. Say I'll be real through Niger. Mm -hmm. So let's you, you not only English now. You just speak right now. Shall no, I'm going to speak. You shall. You shall. You shall see your pidgin better. <laughs> Oh, yeah, right now, right now, for now. Oh, yeah, make so, so the, the question where you ask, the way to make me decide, yes. you know, mm. to come run. Um, so I, I don't date New York, right? I, I, I was born here, you know, all of that stuff. I go to school here from Nursery all the way to Unilag, Akoka. You know, before I come out, I did two years in Akoka. Um, and I've spent 16 years. I spent 16 years in New York and then decided it's time for us to come back. Maybe we come fix our country. So when people ask me, say, waiting give you the authority, waiting mm -hmm. make you feel like, say, now you, you're 35, you're the youngest. Let them say there are several things, right? If you look at the political landscape, Nigeria, the average age for Nigeria is 18. Mm. Yet we have 70-year-olds running the nation, right? Um, which means that, you know, in 10, 20 years, those people, where they there now, no feed. In fact, when I talk to them, no go day there, I mean, they, they all for them, they may die. Mm. You know, I'm not saying that they wish they made them die. But the truth is, 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now, you and I, we're going to still stay here. So if we don't start now to fix our country, when are we supposed to do it? When are we going to do it? Are we going to wait for them to, you know, run, run our futures into hell before we realize, say, it's time for us to correct the problems in the land, right? Talk, okay, go ahead, please. So if I ask persons, say, is your life today better than it was four years ago? Is mm. it better than it was 20 years ago? And if your answer is no, then it's important that we all take that responsibility to lead our nation forward. That's one, too. If you look at the people where they run right now, I talk about inspiration. Right? For us to do anything at all, the first and very first most important thing is we need to be able to inspire people where they're dead right now. Right? When I tell people say I want to run, they tell you, you know, if you do one, you know, politics is bad, it's dangerous. People tell you, say, then they fast and pray, say, may they not kill you. You know, I came back, people, they asked me, say, have they kidnapped you? Are you murdered? You know, that's the, the mindset where we get right now. Like, we, it's almost hopeless. We don't believe that, you know, we can do something good. So the first thing where we're supposed to is inspire people to understand that we still get good people that can do great things. Once we all get on that same plane, we're okay. Even though things are bad now, right, let's find a way to move from here to here. Once we get people there, then we can start to do the things that we need to do. And then, it, you know, I can talk about my experience, educational, um, entrepreneurial, you know, our, our leaders as well, right? Politicians today are people who decide, you know, I'm going to do this without experience. You know, um, I have been able to teach people how to create businesses and how to turn their lives around. And that's what we sort of need in the country today. So, you know, and I can go on and on and on. I know, and right? Of show. course, teaching people how to create businesses in there. As an Ababa boy, you go to Ababa. Of course, now. So we're getting there. Ababa. All right, but then, <laughs> but then of course, um, you, don't, you don't talk, say, you like carry people to put them on a level on a, on a level plane, you know, make everybody there in the same mindset. No, say, now what do we decide, say, we won't do that. Now, the question we ask most of the presidential aspirants, we don't join our seats here, we say, uh, why presidency? If you want to change things, why don't you start from, from the grassroots? Why don't you decide to carry people along? with you first of all why you just go straight to the you know the peak of the park okay so if you ask anybody today right who 
who is the beacon of the current administration, they go tell you Sena Osibanjo, vice president. Mm. Because every time the president come out, you know, three weeks he, he would do a something. whole bunch of stuff. Now, the reason is Osibanjo may be a good man, but he's in a system where the no Griam do what he won't do. Right? So even if he has all the brilliant ideas in this world and the people around him does not understand the importance of that thing, or the head does not, does not say, okay, this idea is brilliant, let's adopt it, let's do it for the people, you can't do anything. So when people ask me, say, why you not go do councillors or House of Rep or Senate? I tell them, say, if I enter there, right, all of now where they talk, say, we need change. Mm. Or waiting all of now, they ask me, say, more I go get the corruption experience where all our leaders get before I'm qualified to rule, uh, rule the nation. So which means that corruption becomes a, 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 a requirement for running the nation. Now, leadership starts at the top. Now, the person where they're on top, now you're supposed to inspire the people where they follow them. You inspire all the people where they're your cabinet, the legislature, and then the country. Now, when you're able to inspire the country, they now hold their legislators accountable. Make them see, you know, the, the, the new path or the perspective that they're supposed to gain. But if you start from the bottom, mm -hmm. right, and there's nothing wrong with starting from the bottom. If you start from the bottom and the top is not correct, Every other thing there stifles the vision. Let it me come in here, please, sure. just quickly. I, yes. I know Sima, I mean, you get a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. Now, you talk, say, the system, and they're very corrupt. Mm -hmm. Now, as a 35 years old, mm -hmm. how you hope to change the system where we don't perceive as being corrupt? Okay. So I, I like to tell people this. When people say, oh, corruption is a big problem. Yes, corruption is a problem because our government has failed at the basic requirement to empower the people, and that's to protect and to provide for them, right? And this, the, the, the reason is... What, what this has done to our people is it has made us kick into survival mode, right? So when I tell people, if you're paying your policeman well, if your policeman knows, say, you go, go sleep, wake up, and at the end of the month, you, you pay him 300,000 naira, 500,000 naira, right? That policeman knows stand on the road, they collect 10 naira, 2020 20 naira from, from cards, you know, because... But we see our politicians earning good money, but some of them are still looting our uh, Nigerian money. Because the head is not right. So when you have right leadership and you can lead by example and you can inspire people, you force other people to align with your vision, right? So if the president comes out tomorrow and say, okay, all of this money, all of this extra benefits, these bonuses and da, 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 I don't take them anymore because there are 87 million Nigerians that can hardly put food on the table before they go to sleep. Now, you as a senator will look at yourself and decide, okay, this village where I come from, there is no road, there's no light, there's no water. I haven't done anything yet. I'm taking home billions and billions of naira. Meanwhile, the people cannot eat. They cannot drink water. They cannot go get health care and all that stuff. If, you, if, if, that, if your president can do that and challenge the people to challenge the people where then they vote for, go come on, put there. Things will start to change. Now, I would like comment because sure. one, of the, one of the core things where you talk to so you, you need to focus on is should you become the president in our technology, health, okay, sure. and um, wealth creation through entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. But if you look what in the average Nigerian needs in mm -hmm. terms of what we need at this moment, because as they speak, so they talk saying so in the next 12 months, 90,000 children are going to die from starvation. Mm -hmm. So you go to so say the basic thing we Nigerians need now, food. Yes not to die from hunger. Mm -hmm. After food, health. Mm -hmm. After health, when they talk of simple, basic amenity, good road, water, mm -hmm. electricity, mm -hmm. make their business even move forward. Mm -hmm. How this problem when Nigerian gets, they align with your focus of wealth creation, mm -hmm. technology, and education. health. And okay. education. education. So I say my three pillars are education, technology, and entrepreneurship. And I'll explain, and then I explain what our four solutions are. Education, because whether formal or informal, right? The people where they go to school or the people where they learn for street. If we are not, if we don't understand our problems, we cannot come up with solutions for them. So what in education they do for us, it, it teaches us about the problems that we get, as well as the solutions. But I need to come in. We get the, we know the problems already. We know the solution. It's not rocket science if you're looking at food, hunger, and how to take it away. It's I, not, it, we don't need a technocrat right. to come tell so, us this so, question. So I'll, ad I'll, I'll address hunger with the solutions. Remember I said there are three, the yeah. three pillars and then there's a four-point solution. So I'm explaining this that will lead me into that part. So let's, <laughs> then, okay. So education is important because it helps us. And if we don't understand our problem, we cannot solve them, right? Technology helps us to enhance the solutions. I tell people, you know, back in the day, before we get all of us, they carry cell phone now. Or you both people talk, say, we know if we do one because we know get analog lines. And then we introduce GSM now. 
People can, you have social media influencers that are making money from that. People are standing on the corner of the street, set up kiosks and can sell recharge cards. You know, so that, that technology was able to create experiences that change the lives of people, right? And then entrepreneurship, if you can't buy and sell, if you have a product and you can't sell it, nobody's buying it, right? So our ability to make sure that we can create wealth, you know, by buying and selling is important. Now, when we talk about that four-point solution, the first one is feed the people. And that comes to your point. It's understanding that you cannot move forward if 87 million people are hungry, right? You cannot, it's like I tell people, you, if, if I'm hungry and you are coming to preach to me and you give me Bible before you give me food, you've already lost me, right? Mm -hmm. So the first thing we need to do is feed the people. And I can explain how, but let me run through the four. And then after you feed the people, after people don't they chop belefu, understand, say, okay, our government, they think about us. Our government understands that in order for this nation to move forward, we all need to be at least fed. Then we start to invest in our well-being. When I talk about well-being, that's where all of these other things come in, the health care, the security, the infrastructure, the environment, all of that comes into investing in our well-being. Now, I don't want to go into detail because I'll keep you here all day. Now, once we, what investing in our well-being does is it raises quality of life. And because you know, some people say, well, you've been out, you don't understand that. I said, no, what being outside did was it gave me that perspective to understand that the things we call luxuries here are necessities. Good water should be a human right. Everybody should be able to have access to good water, should have access to power. Not, not if you cannot buy generator and fuel. It means you're lighting candle and lantern. I'm going to need to hold Because when we come back point, after yeah. this break, um, okay. we will talk about your second point, technology, mm -hmm. and then we'll talk about education. All right, yes, you're welcome back to the Balance Diet of Teletainment this morning. And, of course, we get a presidential candidate in our midst. Now, this very year, July 3rd, Income Outside declared intention to run for president in come 2019. And since that time, everybody, then they asked him a thousand and um, mm -hmm. a thousand and one question concerning this position as a presidential aspirant, where he won't take. Why occupy the top? Why not start from the bottom? What do you feel do? What do you get? As an Abba boy, we don't stay for New York. We don't stay for Yankee Tete. Mm -hmm. What are do. you doing? That's not why we still get the conversation. On. And also we'll be asked yeah, before we go on the break, we talk break. about okay. um, how to end hunger. Now, let's talk about education, which is part of your agenda. Mm -hmm. Now, we know, say, like, just behind the scene, we'll talk about them. Um, now, we know we have, we have over 10 million out-of-school children, for instance, Wobodo, Nigeria. And sadly, 60% or more than 60% are females. Now, how do you plan to revamp the educational sector as much as reduce the statistics? Okay. So I tell people the problem with education is we try to force, we they try force you know, uh, American system or Yibo system of education on our people. People, we don't get culture for generations on how to do things, right? Now coming to tell them, oh, your system is bad. Come and adopt this one that they don't see any use to their lives. Um, I think it's one of the problems we have. So a um, couple years ago, I, I've been doing some research on how we should educate and what triggers engagement, what they make person um, excited to learn something, we get change in life, right? And there were four things, is incentive, right? You know, what did I go get from this thing, right? That's one thing that makes us learn. The other one is consequence. So if I do this thing bad now, and they tell me, say, you know, like when we are children, you go to school and you know confess for class, and you, your daddy and your mommy, I, I will flog you if you know confess. It will make you study, make, you, make them not flog you, right? The third one is connection. With, what connection do I have to this thing that will change my life? that will make me want to learn from learn about this thing, right? I tell people, say, if we use cancer, for instance, if you have a person who don't die from cancer and you go, you, they go to school, and you decide, okay, I want to do research, we go change person's life so that no other person will die from cancer. That gives you a connection to that topic. We make you go, now want to learn about it. And then the fourth one is repetition. When you hear something over and over and over again, subconsciously, you know, you start to learn that thing, whether you like it or not, right? Let's so, take your first point, incentive. Okay. Now, we know that this present administration, they start the school feeding program mm -hmm. to encourage more people in the northern region to actually invest or rather send their children to go to school. Mm -hmm. How far do you see that program taking place? And if you are president, would you scrap that program? Uh, school feeding. So my thing is, before we, before we find solutions for our problems, it's important to understand what the source of the problem is. If you send your children to school, maybe they just go chop and they are not there to learn, you have defeated the purpose of doing that, right? But we also understand that children that are hungry need to eat. And if they're getting that food in school, then do that. Give them that food. The question is, how do we make sure that the children, the parents that are sending their children to school, see value in their children going to school, not just to eat, 
but to learn something from there. That's one. Two, how do we make sure that the child, way they there, understand the importance of being there? Because he can come there, chop the food, and walk out, enter bush, go somewhere else. We did that in every Which are seen cases of that anyway. Yeah, you know, exactly. we, we played uh, but, some but, of that. Also, if, if you look at the, the mindset and the orientation of certain people, especially mm -hmm. people from the north, you see, say, their girl child, they tell them certain things. If we, we all even had that orientation at some point. Now, yes. just education, at some, the, the don't come outside, change all of that. But up till now, some tribes or some people mm -hmm. get certain beliefs and culture that they hold strongly to dearly. Mm -hmm. dearly. And you don't talk and say, be like, say, well, they use or evoke education, they force them on ourselves. Right. How we fit to let these people come outside, understand, change the orientation when they get on top of education without necessarily forcing it on them. We need practical ways to actually make that happen. Okay. So here's the thing. When I talk about understanding the problems to, to bring up solutions, we cannot come up with solutions without the people that we're trying to come up solutions with at the table. So the question is, ask them, what do you want from your children? As a parent, what are you expecting your children to be tomorrow? And how do we get there without forcing them to be this thing that you don't like? Right? So let the f parents tell you, okay, well, you know, my daughters are supposed to, I'm grooming them so that when they get older, I can marry them off and, you know, collect bride price to feed my, the rest of the mm -hmm. family. Or, you know, I'm training this one so that when he's 20 or 25, he can get a job to help me, you know, train my other children. Right? Now, the, question, the, the thing you now put before them is say, okay, fine. So the goal of what you want to do is make sure that you can take care of your family, whether it's from money, whether, whatever it is that... How can we do that? How can what we are bringing to the table help you do that? Well, how do what, you do this? Dialogue is important. Who do you dialogue with, with first? With the, the, the people who are the leaders of the um, mm -hmm. of community. these communities, mm -hmm. exactly. And that's understanding that these leaders of the community understand the heartbeat of the people. Bring them to the table. Let's change the way we educate. Education, I mean, today I know I can, I can open this, what you have in your hand, and learn anything that I want to learn. I never took a business class in college, at, at least uh, bachelor's level, before I started teaching young people how to start businesses. I learned all of it from Google, right? So there are so many things that can equip us today to learn without, you know, tying ourselves inside what we think is, is the, the way to do things. So it's, it's, it's opening up options and alternatives and making sure that the people that are at the table that are coming up with the solutions are people that these things would affect their lives as opposed to us sitting on the table you know we don't go get bachelor's master's phd and it's okay you from what we have learned we think that this is the solution for okay. you don't oh. push back can i quickly ask you something sure. now um I mean, they read your profile and your bio yesterday mm -hmm. over again, and they get something I want to read, and now some, some great achievements and very, very uh, interesting and impressive. They say it's, we, say, we say, in 2015, uh, you've been found something called uh, Startup 52 mm -hmm. yeah. uh, for you know, New York City, uh, New York City's uh, premier and award-winning diversity. Uh, a, a lot of things where you don't do mm -hmm. to help uh, veterans, to help colored people, to help women, and even the mayor of New York said, been applaud you, and everything was so great. Now, that's beautiful. Now, what you don't achieve for the people of New York, that's good. Now, more bring her come home. Now, coming home, we don't talk about what you will do should you become the president for your people. Now, the question now is, what you don't do, okay. starting from home now, from Abba, for your people, make them believe, say, you are the man to lead them, not just Abba, to lead the whole Nigeria to the promised land. Okay. So, so I tell people, say, part of the thing that has qualified me right now is this experience, right? Focusing on education, entrepreneurship, and technology in empowering what we call untapped communities. So, you know, the market women, the young people, when they get jobs and all of that. Now, when people ask me what I've done, in 2014, I came home and I set up a scholarship fund um, in our back. Yeah, and the funny thing is, you know, when we, before we launched that thing, we were expecting like 100, 200 people to say, okay, you put out this information and, you know, people will just show up. There were 2,500 people that came out, young people. And it was a nine-year-old girl that won that competition. It, it wow. was a, an entrepreneurship competition. Nine, at that point, I'm like, okay, Nigeria is sitting on a ticking bomb, right? It's either something good happens from all of this, because this is opportunity right here, or something bad happens if we don't fix our nation. Um, so we've been able to sponsor about 15 students, you know, both academic scholarships and seed capital to start small businesses. In fact, part of what we want to do as well right now is what we call empowerment tours, you know, to discover brilliant, um, you know, small business people, you know, the grass, at the grassroots level. And give them, even if not 10, 10K, to go help them if you want to start, you know, fruit business or granite business or whatever. So that's part of our plan. But coming back to that, we didn't stop there. My brother that lives in Abba, you know, he runs this tech uh, company, it's called Lang Factory. 
the Learn Factory teaches, you know, primary school kids how to code, teaches college students, you know, secondary and university students how to program and all that stuff. And every single year that he has the program, uh, program you know, we contribute with the resources, mentorship and all that from New York. In fact, when I came back, the first thing I did, I spent two days with the young people that are in his current class right now. And we sat down and we talked about their business ideas and we went over how to pitch their business, how to make it better um, and all that stuff. So I've been involved, you know, in, you, at, at least in my own little way. But more importantly, I sat down and I said, I have spent 16 years contributing to a country, another country, that many Nigerians strive. Anytime Nigerians leave the borders, we do ex extremely well outside. So I said, no, it's time that we bring all this, you know, skill set and talent and resources back home. Because the difference between me and that young boy that is hawking something in the head, on his head is opportunity. I'm not better than him. It's just that I had opportunity to be better outside that he hasn't had. So let's create that opportunity for all of our young people. So what would you say is part of the achievement be. of this present administration? Not too young to run. They signed that, which is why I'm sitting down here today. If the president didn't sign that, I, I for no day here today, right? Um, that's one. Um, that's one. Let's leave it at that. That's one. <laughs> <laughs> but very, very quickly, but very, very, very quickly before you go, so what, what party are you running under? <laughs> okay, it's called Advanced Allied Party. In fact, let me show you our symbol. That's AAP. AAP, yes. Yeah. AAP. So, yeah. so when I say AAP, all of you, all of you are going to say, make life better. Okay. Ah, so, really? AAP. Wow. <laughs> say that. Say that. Is that the government? Our government is to make life better. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's the logo for the but AAP. Yeah, but so this, this, this is the silver spoon. This is a golden spoon. Exactly. Exactly. The golden spoon is a symbol of the party, All of right. AAP. And, and here's the, the, the symbolic ex you know, um, mm -hmm. description of that is every single one of us, rich, young, old, you know, poor, male, female, we all, when it comes to eating, we all need to use a spoon. Mm -hmm. And the spoon sp signifies access to wealth, to security, okay. to, you know, well-being. So for us, golden spoon is everybody should have access to that opportunity that can change our lives and make it better. And for AAP, their slogan is make life better, which is why I was trying to get you all to join us in this time. Right. AAP, <laughs> make life there. better. Well, come on, now. Yeah, 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 so when we, we, have, we have to go, <laughs> we have to go, <laughs> of course. We have to go. Can we just ask him of the, sure. because there are a lot of debate on oh, there as right. regards to the office of the First Lady. We'll just okay. scrap it because we know that you're ah. not married. Okay. We'll just scrap it. No, 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 no. Because you're so, not. Because so. So, uh, exactly. you're not married at this point. Who you're officially single. It's not yes. constitutional. Yeah, you're officially single. The office of the first lady is not constitutional. It's not. It's not, so but I, we have been talking about yeah, taking no, no, it out. I think it's important, right? Okay. Because, you know, having a woman that can inspire the women in the nation is important. Not saying that a man cannot do that, right? Um, so I'm looking forward to that. In fact, I'm looking, more than that, I'm actually looking forward to our own version of the royal wedding, right? Uh, so, uh, so let's hope we look at women that can, you know, okay. Okay. Yeah, it's been a fantastic <laughs> time with you, Chike much. Thank you. Okay, go for coming inside the studio. Thank you so much. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.